Now, like I said, getting our ClipChamp button onto our page and working is a very straightforward process. But of course, ClipChamp via that API give you lots of control over what you can do, how many uh, seconds you are going to allow for your webcam upload. So we're gonna have a brief run through probably the most important settings. And more importantly, we're gonna focus on our target, which is currently S3, but we'll be covering the YouTube option uh, in the next part. So the first thing we wanna do is just set our page up so it's ready to have the ClipChamp button injected in. So let's just create a container. We're not working with any styles here, but we'll just imagine we're integrating this into some kind of front end framework. We have an href of hash. We don't need this to go anywhere. Everything is handled on the same page. And we're gonna give this an ID because of course we need to target it with JavaScript. So the ID is gonna be video upload and I'm just gonna pop some text in here. Although this won't display, the ClipChamp button will be shown. So now that we've got that, that's pretty much all of that done. What we now need to do is just pull in a couple of dependencies. And the first one we're going to pull in is jQuery. And the second one is the ClipChamp JavaScript. So first things first, let's just pull in jQuery. I'm going to go over to CDNJS, just search for jQuery, hit this here, and I'm going to go ahead and choose 2.2.2. So I'm going to pull in the minified version, just copy that location. And let's go over and just pop this into here. So that's done. We've got that out of the way. So next we need to head over to ClipChamp's documentation, which will, under the embedding instructions, give you everything you really need to know about implementing this. And it's very, very straightforward, gives you lots of examples and very, very descriptive of each of the options we have here. So we'll very briefly run through these and just take a look at what we can do. And then we'll just start to put that onto our page so we're ready to use this. Okay, so first things first, obviously we need to pull in JavaScript from ClipChamp. We need to use this. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that in there. And I'm just gonna create an opening and closing script tag so we can write all of our code in here. Now there's a couple of ways that we can use ClipChamp. We can either just do this on our own or we can go ahead and use jQuery. This works, well, it is, just a jQuery plugin. So you're probably used to using jQuery plugins, pretty straightforward. So we just have a selector, we use ClipChamp, and we have an object of options. So this is pretty straightforward. We know what our selector is. It is up here, video upload. And then we just say ClipChamp, pass our options in, and that's it. So let's take a look at some of the options. So if we scroll down, we've got a label here the ClipChamp button label. So this is the text that appears in the button, which is placed into the wrapper element. So in here, let's just go ahead and implement this. And we'll just say upload a video. Pretty straightforward. Of course, you can change this to whatever you want. So we also have size, which is the size of the button. So let's go ahead and say medium. And we have a title as well. All this is is the title of the window that will appear. So I'm just gonna say, get your video uploaded. And more interestingly, we have a preset option. So this is the conversion preset, which causes ClipChamp to produce an output video that is optimized for a particular usage scenario or device. So of course, if you know the majority of your users are gonna be doing this on the web, of course, choose web. Otherwise, we can do things like mobile, or of course, you can optimize for Windows devices if that's the case. Of course, this is gonna change for you. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and do this for mobile because I find that part of ClipChamp the most interesting that we have great mobile compatibility here. And likewise, we're gonna set the format to MP4. So if we go down, you can see here we have different options. We have WebM, uh, FLV, ASF, and even GIF or GIF. So this is really cool, but I'm gonna choose MP4 because for me, I'd be placing this into an HTML5 video player and that would work out perfectly cross browser. So I prefer this option, but of course you can also choose between these, completely depends. So next we're gonna look at the resolution. 
So obviously we can keep the resolution that it uploaded at. Of course, we can choose a resolution. So for this demo, I'm just going to do 480p. But of course, feel free to bump this up if you want to. So let's go ahead and use this resolution here. Pretty straightforward. So we also now have compression. Again, let's say I am in the scenario where I want people to use this on a mobile. Of course, we can choose high compression. So here you can see the compression ratio for the output results. And uh, you obviously compromise quality when you go for a high compression. But of course, what I'm going to do is just imagine myself in the situation where I'm going to use this for mobile, maybe people that are out and about and don't have very high speed. OK, so again, really interestingly, we have an inputs option. So you probably already guessed the inputs option can either be file or camera. So obviously we've already spoken about this, but we can upload from the camera so we can record audio and video from our webcam. And of course, we can drag and drop files or choose files from our computer. So we would be silly not to allow both. So, of course, if you have a reason why you didn't want to do this, you can switch between these. So the next is the output. So let's go ahead. In fact, let's cover the camera limit. So we can, of course, limit the length of time that we have here. So in the range of one to 300. So this is the number of seconds. So let's go ahead and limit this. And I'm going to say limit it to one minute. Great. So now we can focus on the output. So we can choose the output here. We can have dummy, which will just kind of uh, do everything normally, but it won't produce a file. So either a blob, it won't upload to Azure, S3 or YouTube. It's just a kind of test run. But of course, in this part, we're going to be looking at uploading to S3. So I'm going to go ahead and choose S3 here. Now, of course, because we are working with S3, what we need to do is go ahead and apply some settings to this. So if you scroll down here, you can see the settings for the different services. In our case, we want the bucket and the folder to be specified because we know we want to upload to this bucket and to this folder. So all we need to do is here say S3 and here we choose our bucket and here we choose our folder. So our bucket, of course, we know it is video upload .codecourse.com. Obviously, it's going to be different for you. And then the folder is videos. So one last option. Of course, there are loads of other options. You can go ahead and explore this and it's entirely up to you how you kind of put this and implement this into your site. What we want to do, though, is just come down or rather up to enable so this will allow you to enable different kind of things so in this case we can have no branding so we can remove the clipchamp branding of course that's really useful if you want to kind of use clipchamp's powerful functionality but brand it with your own site brand which is really cool um, of course we have loads of others no pop out but we're going to just use the no thank you option all this will do is it will disable the thank you message that we see at the end. So let's go ahead and enable this. But of course, feel free to just play around with the other settings. So let's go ahead and paste this in and we are done. So we're finally just going to talk about the on video uploaded callback. So let's go ahead and implement this. Of course, this is a callback, so it's a function. And basically, this callback will receive the video. So we're going to do a console log on this. We won't show this straight away. We'll look at it in just a moment. But this will give us an idea about the kind of things that we might be able to store, we might be able to use later on. And we'll dive into this in much more detail later. So we've got all of these settings in there. We've not even previewed this on the page. So let's give this a refresh. And you can see that now we have a brand new Clipchamp button. Let's go ahead and click this. And you can see we get our nice video upload screen. We can go ahead and record from the webcam if we want to. This is really cool. So if we just go ahead and click on this, you can see that we have a view of our webcam. So this will allow us to go ahead and start recording. Pretty straightforward. And why don't we just try this out? We'll see if this is uploaded to S3. We'll see if we've got everything set up correctly. So let's go ahead and click start recording. You can see you get a nice countdown here as well. 
and you can see that we are now recording as indicated by a little red dot up here. The great thing about this as well is we can pause it if we want to and then continue recording either by clicking this or hitting the space bar. So let's go ahead and continue recording just for a couple more seconds. And once we are happy with the video, we can go ahead and finish. So there we go. We're just doing a little bit of post processing there. And now we have our video. So if we don't like it, we can click record again, but let's go ahead and submit this and see what we get. So this is going to go ahead and upload. It's already processed it. So it's just uploading now. It will finalize. This will close off. We don't see the thank you message because we disabled that. And hopefully if we've set up Amazon correctly, we can go ahead and refresh here and we should see that video in there. Perfect. And it's in there. So let's go ahead and open this. Let's just go ahead and open this in the new tab. And why don't we just go and set this as public just very quickly. And we'll go over here, just open it up again. And there we go. You can see we've got our video. We can play it back and it's all well and good. Obviously not much moving here, but of course you'll see the subject moving. So that's really straightforward. We've not had to do any work ourselves. All of it's handled on Clipchamp, like I said. And of course, this is really nice and private because Clipchamp will never see this video it's straight up to Amazon S3. So let's just go and look at what happens when we drag a video in. So let's pull this over. You can see this is pretty nice. This will go ahead and give you a preview of the video as well. So you can have a little look at it. So we can go ahead and play this. And it's just a little video here that I put together. We're going to go ahead and submit this. It's going to go ahead and upload it. It will finalize. And again, if we head over to S3 and refresh, we see that video in there as well. Could not be simpler. So have a little play around with the settings. There's loads here that you can do. And uh, I'd encourage you to just go through this, familiarize yourself with the API, and you can go ahead and adjust this button to however you want. Now that we've seen this in action, we want to take a look at the developer console. If we go over to the console area, we're going to upload a video and we're going to check out what's returned when we did this console log here. So this is really important because this is how you'll take either the blob, if you were uploading as a blob format, or it would take the Amazon S3 URL or the YouTube URL and it would give you this back. Then you can do what you want with it. So let's test this out just by pulling over this video again and submitting it. Wait for that to prepare and then it will obviously go and upload. And there we go, we're done. And in the console now, of course, if we actually get this correct, so let's go back to the documentation and it should be on video, well, on video creators for blog, which we're gonna look at, it's on upload complete. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Head over here, give that a refresh, and we will upload another video just to test this out. So we'll submit that, wait for it to prepare, and wait for it to upload. And there we go. So here we have a nice object, and in here we have the kind, so we know this is S3, the key, which is essentially just the path to your video. So if you wanted to store this in a database, you can go ahead and do that. We'll be doing that in the project that we'll see in the next section. And of course, the original file name as well, which can really help. So there we go. We've very basically implemented the Clipchamp button. Let's jump over to the next part where we'll look at doing this with YouTube, which is even easier. No S3 setup required. If this is more your thing. It's going to work really well for you.